Jones. <laughs> That's a scene from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Our next guest has been known to pop up from underground locations himself. That's because his passion is exploring the subterranean world from sewers to subway tunnels to abandoned mine shafts. He's detailed his adventure in his debut nonfiction book, Underground, the human history of the worlds beneath our feet. And author Will Hunt joins us now above ground. Will, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks so much. So this started when you were a kid, a teenager, really. What made you want to go underground and explore? So when I was 16 years old, I discovered an abandoned railroad tunnel that ran almost directly beneath my house in Providence, Rhode Island. And it, it just kind of opened a bolt in my imagination because it was this sort of big, spooky, mysterious, unfamiliar place beneath the most familiar territory you can imagine. Yeah. And I kind of got to thinking that, that there are spaces like this beneath every territory in the world. You, you can go anywhere and look beneath your feet and there's something wondrous and marvelous beneath. From, from that moment, every manhole cover was an opportunity. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you even, you went, you've been all over, you've been doing this all over the world. In Paris, for example, you, you describe what's underneath Paris as like a mystery novel. So beneath the streets of Paris, there are 200 miles of limestone quarries known as the catacombs. And there's just, it's just this sprawling, earthy honeycomb. Mm -hmm. And you can go down there with the people who kind of patrol the area, they're the cataphiles, and they go down and have parties and they make sculptures and they paint. It's and its they, own these, world. It's, it, it is its own world. These are like the mole people of the world, I guess. They're, they, they live above ground, but they, <laughs> this, is their, this is their clubhouse. But you have found people in New York, for example, who live below ground, mole, literally mole people. Yes, there are, there are people living beneath the streets of New York known as the mole people who have sort of made dwellings in the hidden nooks of the city. You found one woman who's lived down there for 28 years? Yes. There's a, a tunnel running under the Upper West Side known as the Freedom Tunnel, and in an alcove of that tunnel, a woman named Brooklyn has been living for 28 years. My goodness, this isn't exactly legal, is it? It is not always legal, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So that's got to be tough, too. you got to so be sneaky about this yeah. kind of thing? Uh, in some cases, you have to be a little bit sneaky. Um, when I'm running subway tunnels under New York City, that's, you know, the NYPD PD does not like that, so it, be careful. In doing all of this, and I look back at why you started doing this, have you discovered something more about our world by seeing the world beneath our feet? Of course. I, I think that, that, you know, humans have been interacting in visceral ways with subterranean places for hundreds of thousands of years. So when you are peering into a tunnel or into the mouth of a cave, you're engaging with a really deep, primal human tradition. Anywhere where you haven't been able to go beneath yet that you'd like to? There are some caves in Oaxaca, in Mexico, that I have been dreaming about, and <laughs> I haven't been able to get in there. What is in your dreams? Yeah. I'm just curious. <laughs> They're dark. <laughs> you got to bring the little light with you. Yeah, you just exactly. need the little light. Exactly. <laughs> so we, we played a clip from uh, Indiana Jones to c coming into this. You've actually had an experience like that, where you, were, you popped up in, a, in an unexpected place. So this is in, in Paris uh, with a, um, a group of urban explorers. We walked from one edge of Paris to the other edge, from south to north, um, using only underground infrastructure. And at the end of two days, we emerged through a, a manhole cover in the sidewalk at the foot of a restaurant. Um, <laughs> six of us coming out just spattered in mud and other other substances um, uh, to surprise a, a number of diners. <laughs> now, in reading your book, though, there, there are several places, though, that you point out for ecological and for, you know, for, for just for the people of those spaces in Western Australia and Mexico and others. You know, this, these places are sacred. There, some of them are, are extremely powerful, sacred places. I've visited um, a, a sacred mine in Western Australia that's the oldest mine in the world. Uh, it's 35,000 years old. It's an ochre mine, and ochre is the red clay-like material yeah. that's very sacred to Aboriginal, to Aboriginal people. Um, they believe it's the, the blood of their ancestors, and I was able to, to enter this mine um, and climb down to the bottom just sort of engulfed in this red, soft material. And you had a, a spiritual moment. 
Uh, in, in, in some ways, yes. Um, in a cave in, uh, in, the, in the southwest of France, in the Pyrenees, I uh, was able to visit um, a private cave that's owned by an old family who's lived there for generations, and they don't let people down. They open it once a year at the most, and they let me to the very back of the cave, um, a half mile underground, and there was a, um, a pair of sculptures, clay sculptures of yeah. bison. We're looking at there, yeah. 15,000 years oh old. Oh my wow. goodness. Wow. And I, in the moment of revelation there, I, I sort of Lost teared it. up and it, Lost they're it. just very powerful. Well, Will, we'd love to hear more. I just know there's one place you haven't been and that's the CBS catacomb. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle will take you. It's too dark. I'll you don't take want to go down there. <laughs> Thank you, Will Hunt. Thank you.